Yeah. Alrighty, Lumberjacks, welcome back to another Log and Talk episode. Uh, today we're going to be talking about two things. We're going to talk about death, and we're going to be talking about YouTube ads. <laughs> you know how they always say death and taxes are the two most uh, two most certain things. I think death and YouTube ads are taking over that uh, category. So. Um, I, I was looking back on the original video. I'm a little ways ahead in the series here uh, compared to that first video. But I wanted to uh, look back and I, what I usually like to do is I like to record ahead, like, you know, about eight episodes ahead or about two months almost sometimes ahead uh, so that the content's still rolling. So then while you guys are leaving comments and suggestions and things of subjects I can talk about, I can go back and get that. Um, if I do it like live per week, I usually don't have enough time to touch down on some of the subjects that people want discussed. So I had one gentleman uh, in the chat, or sorry, in the comments on the first video, ask me to discuss uh, existentialism. And existentialism, if you don't know, is the uh, concept of like why we're here. What's the purpose of humanity? What's the purpose of human existence? You know, death what happens after death, all that kind of fun stuff. And uh, I'm not going to touch too deeply onto that one, but we'll, we'll, we'll dig into it a little bit. And then the other concept was YouTube ads, which I really want to get into because I think there's some stuff going on there. Uh, and anyway, in today's episode that we're actually playing, I'm going to be loading up a truck with a dangle pulpwood grapple because I'm feeling frisky and I want to try to use a dangle grapple to load a truck. I can't promise this is going to go well, but we're going to give it a shot. So anyway, um, these have basically episodes have become more of a podcast than it's become um, than it's become an actual uh, viewable series. The stuff I'm doing in these videos, although entertaining to watch, is nothing too exciting. I'm just you know throwing logs on trucks like every other thing. Um, but I've found a lot of users have uh, told me that they're actually using uh, the audio only on lots of these episodes just to listen to the audio. Uh, so I figured, hey, it'd be fun to kind of keep the podcast spirit going by talking about weird subjects and weird things out there uh, while I log. So that way I'm having fun logging uh, and trying to talk about subjects at the same time. So I'm doing the guy thing where I'm trying to do two things at once and we'll see how that goes. Um, so yeah, on the subject of existentialism, death, dying, humans ceasing to exist... So, you know, trigger warning for people if you're afraid of talking about death. Run now! Um, but no. The concept of death, in my opinion, shouldn't scare anyone. I really don't believe it's a scary thing. Um, although it, it, it is something we can't really comprehend as humans, I don't think it's something we should fear because at the end of the day, there's really no choice in the matter. Everyone gets to experience it. It's one of life's wonderful gifts that everybody gets to experience one time or another whether they whether they like it or not everyone gets it unless you're a vampire or something but i don't think those are real last time i checked other than some teeny bopper weird shows that make it look like that so death what do i think about death and uh some people want to hear my advice and my opinions on what i think about death i imagine i think about death like everybody else does but um, there's lots of different concepts of death that uh, kind of float around the world. So, uh, first off, I am not a religious person. Um, I'm not like an anti-religious person. I don't go purposely attacking groups that believe in something other than, you know, uh, a god or, uh, you know, some kind of uh, disciple in the skies that does it for them. Uh, I believe everyone has the right to follow and have the opinion of whatever they want because at the end of the day, it doesn't really matter what the guy next to you thinks. What I am hard against is people pushing concepts on others that don't want to follow or believe in them. So if you want to be religious, fantastic. I love the community aspect of religion. I think there's uh, a lot of good stuff that comes from it. Um, I also see a little bit of a bad side where people abuse the beliefs of religion to influence brainwash take money you know uh create bad uh maybe sexual relationships via uh disciple commands you know that kind of stuff but there's a good aspect of it uh as well so although i'm not against religion at all i don't follow any religious stuff because i just it's just not something i believe to be uh a reality but that's just my own personal opinion and that's the way i've always followed it growing up 
Um, I do have lots of friends who are very heavy religious. And the reason I'm going into religion is that really does play into, um, it really does play into the whole concept of existentialism because um, each person has a different opinion about what's going to happen to them after they die, what it's, you know, is there life after death, is there something else? Um, and religion preaches the concept that, um, you know, there's a heaven and hell and there's um, other things going on outside of, outside of uh, just, you know, being dead. And that's, that's perfectly normal. Now, my personal opinion, and again, this is my personal opinion, um, I don't want to discourage anybody from their beliefs or anything like that, because I, like I said, everyone can do whatever they want, but uh, my, personal, my personal opinion was the reason behind religion back in the days and why it was created. My common sense concept is that um, the reason religion was actually created in the first place was back in the day, in medieval days, and I used to be a huge obsessive med med medieval guy. I used, to, I used to love all the concepts. I followed it. I was more about the armor and the battles and all that stuff, but I did learn pretty heavily about the religious side of things as well. And uh, it was really a big tool uh, to control the populace, especially the less educated populace, because back then they didn't have Google, so they couldn't really do their own research and look at, you know, reality so whatever the church fed them they had to believe and that's how it was back then but at the same time humans being humans it was probably a really easy way to keep people in check about uh, you know following proper morals don't kill your neighbor you know you don't want to stab your neighbor in the head because if you do you're gonna go to hell now if you get enough people believe in that then murder counts gonna go down because nobody wants to go to hell that sounds horrible it's a fiery place with demons and pitchforks and shit and you don't want to go there it's bad so the concept of, you know, death in general um, needs something. Because as a human, none of us can comprehend what's going to happen when we die. We just can't. We can't. And the more you think about it, the more anxiety you're going to get, the more anxious you're going to get, the more concerned you're going to get. Because there is no answer. There is no inevitable answer. It's just once you're there and you experience it, that's what's, that's what's going to be going on. You know, it's... Uh, you can't have Billy Bob Joe over here tell you, oh, death is, the, you're going to go here and there's going to be angels, or you're going to go here and there's going to be a sweet new Taco Bell. There's no absolute definitive uh, answer because nobody can prove it. It's the same thing for religion, you know? Nobody can prove whether, you know, there's uh, Greek gods or Christian gods or Muslim gods because they don't come down and visit you at dinner time and be like, yo, what's up? Uh, it's just not something that happens. So everyone just kind of believes what they want to believe and that's totally acceptable now when it comes to death everyone gets really scared of death because there is no real answer nobody knows if there's a heaven or a hell they just believe that there's a heaven or a hell nobody believes or nobody knows that when you die um whether your conscious moves on or whether you're just you know nothing i'll tell you though and and this is this is where my opinion of existentialism comes in and death so a few years back, and actually uh, I probably have YouTube videos talking about when I went through it all, but um, so I had a appendicitis, which is when you have a, a part of your intestines, your guts, gets a, a perforation where the appendix is due to inflammation and it bursts. So what happens is this little sack of crap in your, in your stomach, and literal sack of crap, because uh, it has uh, poop in it. I know it's gross, sorry about that, but it's true. Uh, what happens is if it gets inflamed, it eventually gets so enlarged that it just goes and bursts. And then what happens is all of the fecal matter or the poop uh, then gets inside your uh, gets inside your bloodstream because now it's outside of the protected bowel area, and now you are exposed to um, whatever was in that nasty bad poop, and it goes in your body, and you get something called sepsis. So unfortunately, uh, I had a really bad, bad, bad appendicitis, and unfortunately the doctor that I had uh, waited a little too long to, uh, he was treating with antibiotics and he thought it was gonna go down. Um, another doctor did not agree and thought we should pull it out of there right away with an emergency surgery. The doctor disagreed with him and we went with the doctor's advice and we tried to follow uh, the antibiotics as uh, the solution. So. Um, unfortunately, it did not work out. The antibiotics did not kick in in time. 
and I had my appendix appendix uh, burst and causing sepsis and a whole bunch of other horrible, horrible complications. I was in the hospital for about three months. So multiple times I had like some severe blood loss due to some hematoma stuff and some other horrible things that were going on. And uh, what ended up happening was I, uh, I passed out several times. I got, whoops, I got super sick. Um, anyway, the point I'm trying to get to is it was a horrible experience that way. But what happened was during those times where they put you out, like they give you anesthetic and you go to sleep, um, that's kind of the closest concept and feeling and this is, the, the, that doctors say the same thing, it's the closest feeling that you can get uh, to death because you're completely unconscious, you're completely removed from existence basically for the time of the surgery. So when they inject you with that anesthetic and you go to sleep, um, you know, I wake up two, three, four hours later and I have no idea what happened. I don't, I didn't feel anything, I didn't dream anything, I didn't, nothing, there's nothing, absolutely zero. So when I went through that horrible experience, I had that multiple times. I had to go through multiple surgeries and multiple things. And honestly, I was just like, I guess I'm just, I'm probably going to die here because I'm like, I'm not getting better. Things were getting worse, you know. Um, but I survived. Somehow, I, uh, I made it through and I survived it. But every time I think back to those times where the doctor gives you uh, anesthetic and puts you under, uh, I was thinking to myself, I'm like, well, if this is the closest thing to death, I don't think death is going to be all that bad at all because honestly, I didn't feel a thing. I didn't feel uh, pain. I didn't feel any kind of anxiety or panic or fear. It was just nothing. So when they put you under and you go to sleep, uh, pff, if death is anything like that, guys, I'm going to tell you right now, you got nothing to worry about because when you die, you just feel nothing. I think the biggest, the biggest fear most people have when it comes to existentialism or death or, you know, the meaning of life and all that fun stuff and why we're here, um, the concept of the death part scares people the most because they sit there and they think about death and they go, oh my God, when I die, it's just going to be blackness forever. You know, I won't, my loved ones will be gone, my, you know, my house, my comfort, my dog, my blah, 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 all this stuff that they think about, they panic themselves so hard thinking about the loss of all this stuff. Um, when really you're, you're not, you're not going to fear any of it. You're not going to have, it's not going to be an eternal blackness that you're in. Now I can't tell you exactly what it's going to be like, cause obviously I haven't died. But, um, if, if doctors are telling me that when you're being put under is the closest you can get to death and you feel nothing, um, in a blink of an eye, it's not going to matter and you won't feel anything. You're not going to be locked in permanent darkness panicking in a room with anxiety. No, you're not. You're going to... Oops, I took a wrong turn here on my road. Um, you are going to feel nothing. You're not going to feel scared. You're not going to feel happy, sad, nothing. You just won't feel anything. That That's my personal opinion. I mean, again, I haven't died yet, or I'm going to get to experience that one day, but um, if it's anything like being put under, and that's why I'm not really scared of it uh, like like a lot of people are, Sure, I don't, you know, it, it sucks to lose loved ones, and I've lost lots of friends and loved ones uh, through my life, and it, it it sucks to lose those people in your life, but at the same time, all the people that I know that passed away didn't go through a very painful experience when they died, and once once they did finally pass away, you know, you just there's a certain peace about it um, to know that they are, um, you know, kind of free of it all. They're really... You know, they don't have the anxiety. They don't have the fear. They don't have the worry. It's all gone, you know? Like, none of that's present anymore. And I think that's a, that's a positive thing that people should look at. It, it, you know, you should, you should look at it as less of, a, less of a scare and more of a, okay, well, you know what? That's just the time you get to just be free of all the, all the nuisances of everything, right? That being said, you know, I uh, I'd also don't encourage people to uh, try to get to that point sooner. <laughs> I mean, I recommend everybody live uh, as long and happy of a life as possible. But the biggest thing I take, and, and again, I know it's a really, it's a touchy subject for a lot of people, but the biggest take I give and I tell people, and up until that experience where I literally thought I had died or was going to die in the hospital, um, after that experience happened, 
I found myself worrying a lot less about the common everyday stuff that I was worrying about. You know, at the at the end of the day, death is the end. So by having that experience, it really put everything in perspective for me for what's important and what's not. You know, if I'm at work and I'm having a really bad day and I'm arguing with somebody at work on email about something and it's really heated and da 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 at the end of the day, I try to stop myself and I go, you know what? None of this crap matters whatsoever. Like all these arguments, all these fights, all these little battles, these worries and anxieties and fears and, you know, whatever life and liberty, you know, make sure you have food, make sure, you know, worry about stuff like that, food and shelter and, you know, important things that are required to live uh, in a certain way. But, you know, for most of the day to day stuff, guys, really, it's the bottom of the barrel, not important. And I guarantee everything you do i use this advice to encourage uh people i know and friends as well and i'm going to use the same advice on you guys right now because it's so true um take chances do stuff you know think about a job you really want or a girl you really want to go ask out or you know like something you want to buy but you're really unsure and you want to save for the future um go for it try something do something don't be afraid you know in the end uh we're all going to go down the same route. We're all going to be moving on to, you know, the, the dead world. So why not take a chance? Are you scared to go out and sing in front of a big crowd or talk in front of a big crowd? The worst thing that's ever going to happen to you, and I don't want to use worst, that's a bad word, but the, the finalist thing that's ever going to happen to you is, is, you know, passing away and dying. So are you really going to let fear be the thing that keeps you from doing something that you'll be so proud of. I'll tell you, I'll tell you, uh, so I used to be in, uh, I used to do music and singing and I used to be in a metal band and uh, I did like lead vocals and stuff um, for a whole bunch of uh, different music and screamo music and stuff. It was a really good time. One day I'll, I'll talk all about that. But anyway, point being, um, I had this opportunity to go play uh, a really, really big concert. It was a huge venue with over, I think it was about 8,500 people. Now, I know that doesn't sound like a lot of people, but it was a lot of people. And I'm the lead singer of this really, I'm going to say crappy because we were really crappy then, a crappy little death metal screamo band thing. And I'm the lead singer and the rest of the group, um, like the drummer, lead guitar, bass, these guys were freaking out, man. Like, because they never, we've never played a concert that big. I mean, we played at like a couple pubs and stuff like that. You know, little low key, less than a hundred people events. But this was opening up an eighty-five hundred person event. Like we thought we were just gonna get absolutely crushed by just everything. So everybody's anxiety is super high, and everybody's like, you know, I'm not gonna be able to do this. I'm like, we, you know, we didn't practice this, and da 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 da. And uh, you know, we 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 went and we we did it, and we were nervous as all hell. But at the end of it, we kept we kept saying to each other, you know, you know, the YOLO thing. I know it sounds stupid and I hate the YOLO thing, but um, we were like, you know what? Like, what's the worst thing that happens? We get booed off the stage and they hate us. We still went and we tried and we did it. And really, at the end of the day, that's that's what matters. You go and you try it. I can't tell you guys how many things I've failed at in my life that I've tried. How many times I've been embarrassed in front of crowds, in front of people I like in front of girls I've liked, rejected by girls, rejected by jobs, rejected by offers. But you know what? At the end of the day, I didn't die. I learned from it. And uh, I came back and I kept going. And here we are now. You know, it's, uh, it's not something you guys should be afraid of. And I always say, you know, if death is going to be the end for all of us anyway, I guarantee if today when I'm, uh, I'm singing in front of 50 people, and four of them were like, oh my God, that guy is such an idiot and he can't sing and he sucks. Well, I guarantee in 40, 50 years when those guys are worrying about death and they're at the end of their uh, their time, the last thing in the world they're going to be thinking about is that guy that sounded like crap that we watched at that bar in front of 50 people. Chances are pretty slim. So don't let fear of doing something stand in the way of trying it you know try stuff go for it give it a shot so when it comes to existentialism and again i 
I've I've gone more to the death side of existentialism than I have to the uh, you know the original concept of why we're here. Um, I personally think the only reason humans are on Earth is to create more humans because we are a uh, organism, we are a creature, we are an animal. Um, our only true purpose is to create more more people. I mean, that's just the way organisms work. It's like, um, think about flies and maggots. Oh, sorry, that's a gross subject, but think, think about flies, right? So, fl okay, let's go with mosquitoes. Mosquitoes are less disgusting than flies. So, <laughs> not by much, but a little bit. Look at mosquitoes. A mosquito has a 24-hour lifetime. I think that's accurate. Now, I live up in British Columbia, and we have a lot of mosquitoes. Hundreds, thousands, millions of mosquitoes all the time, all year. So mosquitoes have a lifespan of about 24 hours to 36 hours. That's roughly what I remember from school. I could be wrong on that, but it's about that time. Now, the only purpose a mosquito has in its entire 24-hour life is to bite something that has blood proteins in it, whether it's a bear or a human or a goat or a whatever, try to build up as much blood enzymes and proteins in its little ass as possible, and then it goes to the most nearest water source, whether it's a lake or a pond or a puddle, and it lays the eggs of more mosquitoes, a lot of them, and the larvae into the water so that it can be born and create more. And then the mosquito dies. That is the life of a mosquito. That is what they do. Now, um, although monkeys and horses and animals and creatures and humans are all more complicated than a mosquito, at the end of the day, our main purpose is survival. Keeping alive, creating more humans. So I always laugh and I tell people, we're just giant mosquitoes. <laughs> I mean, look at us. We, we kill animals to stay alive. We pick the grass to stay alive. We consume, we consume things like, you know, fruits and vegetables and material from the earth so that we can continue to grow, uh, reproduce, and create more people. I really don't think it's more complicated than that. I think that's kind of the end of the, uh, the, end of the concept for why humans are a thing. Um, now, a lot of people think, you know, and, and I mean, oh, geez, I went the wrong way again on this road. That's okay. You know, I'm having fun doing this loop, so we're just going to keep doing it. Um, the, uh, you know, the... The, a lot of people, religious-wise or uh, spiritual or tr uh, tribal-wise, they have the concept in hand that, um, you know, we've been put on Earth by a greater meaning or by aliens or by some kind of thing so that we can create something on Earth. Now, I'm not going to ignore the fact that humans are an amazing organism for, one, our survival rate, for the way our bodies created ourselves so that somehow through all the crazy shit we go through we can survive i don't know how but we do uh even me being in the hospital i have no idea how i survived that by all rights the doctor said i probably should have died like three or four times but i survived somehow because the body wants to live longer so that it has a higher chance of reproducing more children or more species um now like i said we are an amazing species uh for what we've accomplished obviously the mosquitoes never built airplanes or towers or logging equipment or anything to reproduce a, or to recreate, you know, uh, shelter and such. Um, but do I think we have a, an ulterior purpose for why our organism came to be what it is? You know, are we some great ancient gods that, you know, dispel some kind of special powers that keep the... No, I don't think any of that. I think we're just a big mosquito that got out of hand... <laughs> <laughs> and I think, um, I think we're our only purpose is just to make more people. I mean, I, I, you're gonna hear multiple opinions on it, but can anybody really say humans are good for the Earth? Can you say that? I don't think so. I mean, there are good people that try to do good things, like you know, protecting animals, saving animals. But at the end of the day, um, it, as good as it might feel to go, you know save a llama from a lion that's about about to get eaten well now the lion has to go find another llama to kill and it's just the circle of life you know it just repeats not to sound like a rude you know i i hate to see baby animals or you know llamas or something or a cat or something get eaten by a bigger creature 
But at the end of the day, I'm not going to put the onus on the lion that eats the cat or the llama and be mad at that because it ate it, you know? And I know there's a lot of, you know, save the save the nature programs where they're like, oh, this poor dingo is about to get eaten by this giant hyena and we saved it. And it's like, well, I'm sure that thing's really appreciative, but all you've done is just saved a mosquito for 20 minutes until the next thing comes along and kills it. And I know that's a really cynical way to look at it, but in the grand scheme of, uh, you know, how reality works and stuff, it's, uh, we're, we're pretty much in that same trend. You know, um, when you start doing the whole, you know, I hate to see people suffering. I hate to see animals suffering. I hate to see anything suffering. You know, I would rather something be, be killed or dead um, if there's no way to help it than I would to see something suffer. I, I got to get that across because I hate, and I've, I've, had, I've lived on a, you know, farmy kind of rural area. We had to put down lots of animals. I've had to put down lots of my, my best friends, like my pets that were my best friends, dogs, cats, you name it. And it is not a good experience. It is really horrible to go through, and I hate it, and it makes me sad, and it's a horrible feeling. But um, at the end of the day, it is the circle of life. Everything eventually uh, gets old and dies, and that's, that's, uh, that's just kind of the way that works, right? But uh, I, I always see things, you know, where they're like, you know, humans in general are a species that got out of hand. That's, that's what I think we are. And I know it sounds really crazy to talk about it being a human, but um, I feel that we basically just kind of became this, this giant, you know, force on Earth, this organism that just grew and grew and grew and got smart and got smarter. Now, why we have subconsciouses and other animals kind of don't, I mean, there are, there are obviously other animals that do, but not quite to our level. Um, I remember watching <laughs> this joke on The Onion, if you guys ever watch The Onion News, which is just like this comedy newscast where they make satire stories about news articles. And in this uh, satire story, they talk about a gorilla, and the joke is, you know, they taught this gorilla, humans uh, taught the gorilla that it eventually is going to die, and then the gorilla was just sad and depressed for the rest of its life. Um, the comedy behind it is just, you know, what is the purpose to us knowing that we're going to die? We're really one of, I, I think we're one of the only species that has uh, a conceptual understanding of the fact that we're not longer going to be here anymore. Even though we don't know what happens and we can't really comprehend it, uh, not a lot of species of creatures can do that. So why we evolved to the point to develop our own self-conscious, I, that part I don't understand. Um, maybe just a freak genetic thing that happened when, uh, you know, all the genes were smashing together in DNA when we were getting created. Um, but yeah, you know, there's, there's so many different types of people that it's, it's, it's hard to do it, but you know what? Uh, that's why I throw my opinion out about it. I, I don't think we're, I don't think humans are special. I think it's really amazing as an organism point of view, looking at the study of other creatures, such as, you know, a mosquito or a snail, the fact that we've become what we've become. Uh, is quite impressive in comparison to the long haul of everything, but uh, yeah, I, I don't, I don't really think we have a specific special purpose other than survive, eat, create more people, and keep going. I mean, look how many people there are on Earth now that have grown. It's, uh, it's wild. But yeah, you know what? That that that's enough on that subject uh, for you guys. But you guys, you know, you asked. I had a lot of people ask me that opinion. What do you think about death? And I never usually touch down on it because I was just like, most people don't want to talk about it. And there's a lot of people who believe in different things. You know, it, you know, there's different religions. There's Christians. There's Muslims. There's monks and Buddhists. And there's all kinds of different ways people interpret death. And uh, honestly, I, uh, I applaud anyone who, like, I, I feel like I, I can't really believe that stuff. I just can't. I'm just such a common sensey, factually kind of person that it almost it, it almost sucks being that way. I wish I was a little bit more open to that stuff because then I think I think those people have a less fear of concepts like death because they believe that there's going to be an afterlife. And I mean, hell, maybe I'm wrong. I mean, I'm not I'm not I'm not shooting down anybody's opinion. Maybe I, maybe I'm completely wrong, and I'm just this pagan idiot who doesn't know any better. And uh, you know. Maybe, maybe we are. Maybe there is a heaven and a hell. Maybe they're going to total up all of our deeds that we've done in our lives, good and bad, and 
choose a good place or a bad place, you know? <laughs> there's really uh, there's really no way to be uh, certain on any of it. But that's my opinion. I, I think we read into it too much and we're too scared of what's going to happen. Guys, do not worry about it. When you get there, you get there. But until then, just live your life and try to have some fun, you know? Try to have some fun with some other people. Create a life of your own. Don't worry about it. But again, that's enough on that subject. Now, I did promise I was going to talk about YouTube ads because death and taxes and death and YouTube ads are the two things that are most certain, apparently, on this earth. And we're kind of at the end of this video, but I'm going to talk about it as we slowly trek back to the mill here. So, uh, this isn't really a big subject. I just wanted to touch on it. But, like, what the hell is with YouTube and all the double ads? I realize they're trying to push their premium service. They want everybody to switch over to the premium YouTube where you pay $12 a month and you get access to everything and yada 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 so if you're an excellent you know YouTuber and you have lots of shows and stuff that you follow totally I understand you know maybe that's a better way so you don't have any ads interrupting the shows that you watch but um, for the most part uh, most people just come on here to watch the odd little thing you know I don't treat YouTube as Netflix and maybe one day it will be but it's not yet I don't treat it as Netflix I don't come on here to watch um, you know, like my next episode of Sons of Anarchy or Vikings or, you know, something like that. I, uh, I come on here for tutorials or quick tips or a quick look at a stupid video that I didn't think, you know, like, let's drop an eight ball on a, on a cheese grater from 5,000 yards up or something. Whatever. It's just a brain wasting time kind of thing. I don't usually get super intertwined into series or videos or anything like that. But man, what is with the double ads? That drives me crazy. So now before you used to have like an ad and it would play out, and then, actually, I laugh right now, probably when I'm talking, there's gonna be like an ad, like, right somewhere, because we're near the end of the video, it'll probably pop up. But now it's two ads. It's not one ad, it's two. Two come up. Granted, they used to be like 20 second ads, and now they're only five seconds each, but, oh, I hate when I see ad one of two. It's just like, it just makes me want to skip a video. Uh, I've been trying to find a way to see if I can, like, disable the double ad thing. I haven't found a way. And I mean, Grant, at the end of the day, you know, everybody on YouTube's got to make money, but how many of you actually click on those ads? I bet it's not many. I mean, once in a while, I'll see something like, oh, you can get this. Check this out. You know, Boston Dynamics puts out a new robot. Oh, sweet. I click on that. But for the most part, it's like, you know, buy this mobile the game or, you know, get your hair plugs or something <laughs> like stupid stuff. And I'm just like, eh. Mostly the secondary ads have been YouTube premium because they're trying to promote it, but I think it's a little dirty. I don't think they should do it. Even as a content creator, I mean, I don't I don't make a whole lot off of YouTube. Uh, I think last year was the highest year I think I ever made. I made like 500 bucks that I got to take home. Woohoo! For freaking 900,000 hours of video, I made 500 bucks. If I were to... I always say this all the time. If I were to actually break down the time I spend on mods and videos and content and put it into, like, financial times, yeah, it's like making five cents a day or an, an hour would be, like, micros of a cent. Oh, we almost went left again. Let's not do that. Microbes of a cent. Like, ridiculous. Um, so I realize there's lots of YouTubers that require the ad revenue to stay alive and blah, 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 blah. That's their full-time job. Um, I'm not one of them, so... I'm actually more of a consumer where I like to go on YouTube and actually use it to find stuff and do things with it, but I hate it. I hate double ads. I hope they get rid of it because uh, I don't know if you guys are annoyed by it, but I am annoyed as hell by it. So if I can ever find a way to get rid of it, I will, but I don't think they're uh, giving anybody the option to do that right now. I'm just going to park this truck. We're done with this load. We still have a lot to... Uh, I'm actually going to park it way back here because when we come back in the next one, we'll probably... Uh, probably keep forwarding so yeah i hope you guys enjoyed that little talk about death and taxes just kidding death in youtube which is the same thing um it's good to it's good to you know jump on some random subjects like that it doesn't really matter what i say we're all gonna die and nothing matters anyway that's a terrible concept but it's true um so so whether you believe what i say or whether you believe in another cause another religion another purpose it's totally cool it's all good man believe in whatever you want because I'll tell you, whatever you believe in and whatever I believe in, it's not going to matter in, you know, 80 years. I won't care. You won't care. We'll all be off doing our own little things. But, you know, take it into, take it into stride. Think about it. Pick your own decision. Just don't, don't rule your life with fear of death or fear of anything. 
Live your life the way you should. Anyway, I'll catch you guys on the next one. See ya.